I see that there's a dearth of energy in the translation hall. Perhaps a little soup could make work more bearable. That pot there is full of soup. It is indeed. Martin did his very best. Hand it over. Ah, uh, are you sure that Martin cooked it? Why do you ask? It has such a strange taste. Like plants. Like seeds. Well, whatever. Here, take it and thanks very much. And now, if you'll excuse me. Here is the hottest to us. When can I pick up the translation of the first page? In seven days. Seven days? Is that your way of thanking me for all the trouble I went to? Thanking you? If memory serves you, I already thanked you. And I supplied you with food during working hours. Ah, oh, now I get it. That's the price I have to pay. Give your translation preference ahead of the other 40 I've got to do. Tell me if I'm wrong. No one said a word about prices. We're not at the market. Exactly. This is a library. One with a strict order of work to do. One which I respect. As do you. I had merely hoped to see the gesture I made rewarded with one from you. Is that right? What? Oh, all right. Give me that silly book. Let's see. There you are. The translation in the book. I hope we're quits now. As far as I'm concerned, yes. Then go. Now. I have a lot to do. Brother. Yes? My acolyte was trained as a copyist. All right. Do you have the hottest to us with you? Yes. We've got it right here. I assume that your acolyte will know how to translate that properly into Latin? Yes. One could even say that Greek is my novice's second tongue. I hope so, to the benefit of the library's archives. Does he have his quill with him? Yes, a good quill, if I may say so. Correct. I see that the child has what's necessary to pass the exam. The time has come to test your skills. Come with me, boy. It takes is one glance to see that it's rather rudimentary, and I see that cleanliness is not one of your virtues, boy. Huh? You've also overlooked several details in the miniatures. Do you know what it means to be a copyist? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I cannot accept that. Inacceptable for a copyist? He's not an apprentice, I presume? I... What you're holding in your hands is obviously not on the same level of work as from someone who's worked here for years. I presume you'll make efforts to hone and polish his skills until the boy deserves to share in the fame of the copies made at this abbey. Hmm. All right, he's accepted. You can enter the scriptorium whenever you please, my boy. <clears throat> the two of you can enter the scriptorium is what you surely wanted to say. What's that? Didn't I make myself sufficiently clear? The scriptorium is solely for the copyists in our order. The rules... Yes, but Bruno is my acolyte. So you'll understand that he must go wherever I go, and vice versa. If he wishes to enter the scriptorium, then I'll escort him. But the rule... Just like you, I am bound to them. I see we have a conflict here. Not the slightest, brother. You have accepted my acolyte as a copyist, and, thanks to the rule that binds me to Bruno, I can enter the scriptorium with him. Hmm. I don't see that very clearly. The rules are there to relieve us of the burden of always having to make the right decision. Your very words. All right, all right already. You can come into the scriptorium.
Sometimes an X can mark a certain place. In this case, it's an ink mark. Let's see where the ink mark has led us. What's inside there, Master? Nothing except an ink pot and a parchment with a simple drawing. Brother Leonardo, we're locking up! Gottfried, um, what brings you here? Oh! Uh, what have you got there? Nothing. Tell me, Gottfried, Anselmo was the gatekeeper, wasn't he? Yes, of course he was. If that's the case, then why did he have the key to this desk in his possession? As far as I know, only copyists are allowed to be here. Oh, um, hasn't anyone told you? Told me what? Anselmo was a copyist before he became gatekeeper. Is that right? It's the first I've heard of it. Oh, how should I put it? The Abbey caught wind of his attitude toward the rest of his brothers and decided that, uh, which way can I put it? Um, he had earned a lesson in humility. I see. Is there perhaps anything else you've forgotten to tell me? No, 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 no. Uh, nothing I know of. Are you sure? Please excuse me, brother, but the bell has already rung for Vespers. All right. We'll talk about this again some other time. That Gottfried is a bit odd. Yes. There are too many mysteries to this matter. Let's go, Bruno. We must prepare for the evening meal. Today, I was invited to dine at the abbot's table. And now, Brother Leonardo, how is your investigation coming along? Proceeding well, Father. Although the path is a difficult one. I see. You've been carrying out investigations the whole day and haven't found a thing. Anselmo should never have died. And nothing would please me more than closing this chapter. Do you get my point? That's precisely what I wanted to talk about with you. About Anselmo's death? No about chapters and books. If you would allow me to enter the library, I could... This is Nicholas, our blacksmith. Perhaps he can tell you something interesting about the frankincense censor. I hadn't had the pleasure of making his acquaintance yet. I don't think he was in the Abbey today. He was on the road for several days. Oh, that's interesting. I can't believe my eyes. You're Leonardo del Toledo? The famous Leonardo del Toledo? Standing before you. Oh yes, I mean, during the evening meal, I wasn't sure it was really you sitting next to the abbot. Many important people have passed through here, but of your caliber, not one. Oh, brother Leonardo del Toledo at our abbey. Well, how should I put it? I'm finally getting to meet you. Say, you're surely here because of what happened with Anselmo, right? Such a sad thing. Oh well, sad for some. Others couldn't stand him. Mind you, no one wished he would die, did they? After all, we're all brothers of Christ. Who was also murdered, as I just recall? Yes, but he died to save us. We don't know the reason for Anselmo's death yet. That's my opinion too. Somehow that doesn't come as a surprise. You're the blacksmith at the Abbey, aren't you? That's right. Nicholas is my name. If you need anything, just tell me. Fact is, I'd be very grateful if you did. 
My goodness, brother Leonardo del Toledo actually asking me for something. It would be an honor. I'll make a note of that. Really? Thanks very much. I'm the one who should be grateful. No, I am. All right, I'm sorry. I haven't asked for a thing yet. It's true. I'm deeply touched. The abbot told me you haven't been at the abbey for the last few days. Yes? May I ask the reason why? Of course you can. I need materials. You know the story. You can't find iron among rocks. <laughs> Get it? Iron among rocks? <laughs> oh. Yes, that's quite witty. I've questioned other smithies in the area about the broken frankincense sensor. In the event that it might be hung up again and attack other brothers? Brother, don't go off pulling my leg now. I was just trying to obtain some useful information. But as I see, it was in vain. Why? Well, because I'm only a blacksmith, not a top-notch investigator like you. Oh my, it's gotten late. Oh right, yes, you must be exhausted. What do you think of continuing our discussions tomorrow? We could exchange impressions. I could report on the conversations with other blacksmiths. I've got so many questions to ask you. Tomorrow actually will be the day for questions, and you too shall have to answer some. Bruno, come on, wake up! Did you go anywhere last night? I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I think so. I, I had to go to the loo. I think. I get the point. Tell me you locked it afterwards with the key. Key? What key? How could you let that happen? Let what happen, master? All the ministrations the Holy Spirit has to offer wouldn't put an end to your stupidity. Someone's stolen the parchment from us. Most likely Godfrey took it and now he has disappeared too. And it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs>